Hey guys, it's Mr. Post, and on today's video, we'll be checking out some more Lewis star structure for covalent compounds. In this case, we're checking out the polyatomic ion carbonate, which is CO3, and traditionally you'll see it with a 2 minus charge. Alright, the rules for this are the same as any of the rules we've learned already. We're going to first find out the no number of valence electrons in CO3. Carbon has four valence electrons, oxygen has six, but there's three oxygens, so times three gives me 18. So the total number of electrons is going to be four, plus the 18 contributed by oxygen is going to give me 22 electrons to place in my Lewis dot structure. The next rule is to, next step in the process is to kind of just draw what I call a skeleton structure. Now this is kind of just a really, really thin and basic skeleton structure, only showing the elements arranged around the element that needs the most electrons. Carbon needs the most electrons, therefore it goes in the middle. It has four, oxygen has six. All right guys, step number three in our process is going to be to put down the initial bonds between them. So now I've made my covalent bonds. This is how they're gonna to stick together. Stay together because they're bonded. So now I've used six electrons, I'm down to 16 electrons left. Your job now in step four is to place them around the elements here in order to achieve octets. Let's place them down, dudes. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Now we gotta take inventory of what electrons are on these elements here. We gotta find out if we actually have octets, because we placed all our electrons. We have no more electrons to place. We were committed to putting down 22, and we did so. So let's check out this oxygen. And this oxygen right here, I have two, four, six, and we're going to count these two. We have eight electrons on this one right here. So that has eight. On the one down here, I have two, four, this is six, and that's eight. That's eight as well. Now this oxygen has two, four, six not too good over there, guys. Not too good. And the carbon, in fact, has two, four, six as well. So we have issues. So what can we do here? Anytime we've used up all our electrons, it's time to consider double bonding. So let's look at this, this uh, pair of electrons here, or this one, or this one. Or even for that matter, some down here, too. But just because there's a vacancy right up on the top of carbon, I see that I can throw my two electrons not up there, but right into the middle of the bond. So I've taken these guys here and I've actually replaced them right there. Now I'm going to erase these guys so that they are going to disappear. So what we now see is that this oxygen still has two, four, six, and eight. The carbon now has two, four, six, and eight. But the oxygen over here, and I'm going to circle it to make it crystal clear, this oxygen only has six electrons. And there's really nothing we can do. Carbon doesn't have any more electrons to contribute to a double bond. All its electrons are actually right now locked up in a double bond to the right-hand side, a double bond going downward. So in a way, we're kind of out of luck here. We're missing electrons here and here. Now, when you see this written, you see this as CO3, and it's often written as a 2 minus charge on the whole entire molecule. Now that's not the charge in oxygen, but rather the charge on the whole entire molecule. It is a 2 minus charge because oxygen needs to get two more electrons. It can't happen from within the molecule. So what you're going to see is those two more electrons are going to come from without, on the outside. Someone's going to give this compound some electrons. And that is why we have a 2 minus charge, is because literally, look at the charge here. I have a minus charge and another minus charge coming in and filling up those spots. What's going to come in? Possibly a sodium. Sodium could be one of the elements that comes in and gives an electron in there. But in that case, I would need two sodiums to come in and fill that up. And that is why the formula for sodium carbonate is Na2CO3 because I need two of them. Likewise, I could have also used a beryllium and beryllium actually has 
two electrons in general in its outer shell. So just those two could have been plugged into the void right there. So once again, we're looking here at a polyatomic ion that is needing two more electrons, which is why it goes out and gets two more electrons. And when you gain electrons, you gain a negative charge. Now that you're familiar with this one, why don't you try NH4, ammonia, and see what you can do, okay? Press pause, write the Lewis dot structure, and figure it out. And you're going to see also that this is traditionally drawn as NH4 with a 1 plus charge. All right, guys, ammonium, let's check this out here. We got five electrons from nitrogen in its outer shell. Hydrogen has one. And there's four of them, so all together we have nine total electrons to place. Draw my Lewis dot skeleton structure that comes next. Skeleton structure is simply you're going to arrange the element that needs the most electrons in the, in the middle and then the ones that actually don't need the most around it. The next step after that is to draw simple covalent bonds, the sharing of the electrons in between the elements. Now they're bonded together, they're bonded together, and they're bonded together. And as you see it, I have one, two, three single covalent bonds within this molecule. Oh, I'm sorry guys, I actually left out my fourth one as well. Okay guys, this is ammonium, this is NH4, and typically when you see it, it also has a 1 plus charge. And I want you to draw the Lewis dot structure for this molecule. Starts off by counting the number of valence electrons in my molecule. I have five for nitrogen. Each hydrogen has one, but I have four hydrogens. So altogether, I'm going to have four electrons contributed from hydrogen. So let's add that up. Five from nitrogen plus the four from hydrogen gives me nine electrons total to be placed in my Lewis dot structure. And that was the first step. The second step is simply to draw a skeleton structure with the element that needs the most electrons placed in the middle and then the other ones placed around it. Third step that I'm going to give you is to draw a simple covalent bond between the two elements. That's right, just like that. I want you to remember, hydrogen is in the first energy level. It does not need an octet. It needs what's known as a duet. Two electrons fill up that first energy level, so it's actually pretty stoked right now. Every hydrogen has two electrons. Now check out the number of electrons you place. Two, four, six, and eight. But the thing is that we came to the table with nine electrons. So now you have to say, I have this extra electron on my molecule. And what's up with that? It doesn't fit. You can't have nine electrons on nitrogen. You can't have three on hydrogen. So what you're going to see happen is that this electron is going to be lost. It's going to be given away and it will leave as an electron with a minus charge. And it just it doesn't go anywhere. Specifically, it will go to another element that needs electrons. Now check this out, dudes. When you lose electrons, you are giving away a negative charge. We gave away a negative charge. Look what we become. We become one plus. So ammonium is a 1 plus ion specifically because it loses one electron. And when you gain electrons, you become negative charged like carbonate on the previous slide. So that electron goes away, and I'm going to erase this whole entire electron now. It's gone. And I'm going to do a little bit more of my artistic work here. Now I can say that this whole entire structure has, in general, a 1 plus charge to it. The last compound we're looking at today is phosphate. Phosphate is PO4, and that's right, guys. You've probably seen it with a 3 minus charge. Let's do this up here. We got 5 electrons in phosphate. 4 times 6 is 24 electrons in oxygen. Altogether, there is 29 electrons total. That was a 5 from phosphate and a 24 from oxygen. You have 29 electrons to place. Because you know it's a 3 minus charge on phosphate, it's probably going to steal a little bit of the thunder here. You know it's going to be short 3 electrons. 
Let's draw out the Lewis dot structure. The skeleton structure is standard. The element that needs the most electrons goes in the middle, surrounded by the ones that are not needing the most. Step three, draw the initial sharing of electrons and my covalent bonds. I used eight electrons now of my 29. So 29 electrons is what I started with. I've used up eight in my Lewis dot structure. That means I have 21 electrons left to place. Let's go ahead and place them, dudes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. And what you're going to see here is that this has 8 electrons in its outer shell. This has 8 electrons in its outer shell. This has 8 electrons in its outer shell. And this has 2, 4, 5 electrons in its outer shell. And phosphorus also has eight. All right, guys, there's nothing we can do. There's no way we can get electrons over here from within the compound. Therefore, phosphate has to seek elsewhere to gain an electron there, to gain an electron there, and also to gain another electron right there. And so what's going to happen is that those electrons will come in from the outside. And when you gain electrons, you gain a negative charge. This will gain three electrons, becoming a three minus charge. So altogether, my phosphate molecule now becomes my phosphate polyatomic ion, and it has a three minus charge to it. All right, guys, that wraps up our polyatomic ions and the Lewis dot structures that they have. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Hope it was helpful, dudes. Have a good day. Peace.